oh, the season's not over yet. Please wake me up when the season's over. I really do not want to be awake. Mm, okay, fine. I'll play it out. All right, let's go, guys. What's going on, Falcons fans? Logan here. Welcome back to Rise Up Rundown. And if you're new here, welcome. The Atlanta Falcons have to go on the road to play the Minnesota Vikings heading into week six. And the season was already pretty bad from the start, but they have to play a good Vikings team. And oh, I just really want the season to end, to be honest with you. But who else wants to see the Falcons get at least a freaking win this season? So can the Falcons win this game? Let's talk about that starting right now. Before we get started on our week six game preview versus the Minnesota Vikings, I should probably tell you how my game previews work here at Rise Up Rundown. First, we go over summary to the matchup, which means I describe the story for both teams heading into the game. First, the opponent and then the Atlanta Falcons. After that, I go over what to watch out for from the opponent. So in other words, it's really reviewing the opponent's biggest strength and the Falcons have to prepare for that. After that, I go over possible breakouts for the Falcons. And it could mean that I'm previewing the opponent's biggest weakness on the team and the Falcons can take advantage of it. Or maybe the opponent isn't necessarily weak on this side of the ball, but it's not going to be enough to stop the Falcons on this side of the ball anyway, if that makes sense. And then last but not least, we go over keys to victory for the Falcons. In other words, previewing how the Falcons can win this game. So, let's get started with our game preview versus the Minnesota Vikings. And all I'm going to say is, if you look at this game preview versus the Vikings... And then after that, watch the game preview I made last week versus the Panthers. It's almost the same exact thing. The Vikings and the Panthers are two very similar teams. And when I was writing down what to watch out for, possible breakups for the Falcons and the keys to victory, unintentionally, they're almost the same exact thing as what I had last week against the Panthers. But anyway, this week we're playing the Vikings. So let's first go over summary to the matchup for the Atlanta Falcons versus Minnesota Vikings. For the Minnesota Vikings, they might be 1-4, but watch out though, not all teams are out of playoff contention when they're 1-4, and, and the Vikings sure are playing like they're not out of contention yet. The offense is really good this year, and they, they really have been in all of the games they've played, and Frankly, they almost should have won the last two games they played. They just got a little unlucky. So I wouldn't necessarily count out the Vikings out of the playoff race just yet. I think they could possibly turn this thing around even though they're 1-4. and four. And I do like Mike Zimmer as the head coach. And for the Atlanta Falcons... Does anyone even want to hear the story for these guys? Like, Dan Quinn and Thomas Dimitrov got fired. They're 0-5. They they are probably going to have a top three draft pick. It's just, it, what's their direction this year? I don't know. The Falcons are kind of just trying to play out the season and just get it over with, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, uh, let's hope we at least get a win, for crying out loud. It doesn't matter who, just a win. Goodness gracious, I don't want to be 0-16. What do we need to watch out for from the Minnesota Vikings? Now, the first thing, I know there's people saying Dalvin Cook will not play in this game. But if Dalvin Cook plays, of course you got to watch out for the run game. He is just killing it. 92 attempts for 489 yards and 7 touchdowns. He averages 5.3 yards for, per carry. He's just a monster. I don't think Dalvin Cook is playing, but we get a little bit of a, we get a, little bit of a break. Goodness, I can't speak right now. Um, we get a little bit of a break if he doesn't play. But, I mean, that's just a little bit of a break. Because the rest of the offense is pretty special. The passing game is another thing we need to watch out for. Kirk Cousins, we all know who he is at this point. He is not a mobile guy, but he definitely can make really good, accurate throws. And, you know, he's a starter for a reason. Like, he's a really good quarterback, to be honest with you. And his receivers... I love his receivers. Justin Jefferson is absolutely lighting it up right now. And Adam Thielen, of course, we're all familiar with him. 
So this offense as a whole is nothing to sleep on, and our defense kind of is something to sleep on, to be honest with you. So if Delvin Cook is not playing, that doesn't guarantee us our defense is going to be okay because the Vikings have an awesome passing game. But what are some possible breakouts for the Falcons? It's literally the same exact possible breakouts I had for last week's game preview. It's the passing game, run game, and the pass rush. Now, two of the three things have not really been breaking out in the last few games. But, I mean, it's listed as a possible breakout for the Falcons, right? It's not a guaranteed breakout. It's not a, I'm definitely betting money on this to break out. It's just a possible breakout that the passing game does finally get it back together. I'm going to be honest, this passing game has not necessarily been what it once was. Julio Jones can't stay healthy. Matt Ryan looks lost out there. They really are wasting the free agency signing in Hayden Hurst. They just, for some reason, will not utilize him. The only thing that's good on the offense on for the passing game is Calvin Ridley. He is lighting it up. But it's possible maybe Matt Ryan will be back to who he once was and they'll get Hayden Hurst involved. Calvin Ridley probably will break out just nonetheless, but I don't know. It's possible. Now, here's the only possible breakout that I actually do feel will break out, though, is the run game. Not only is Todd Gurley getting things done in Atlanta, and I guess you shouldn't necessarily watch out for the other running backs like Edo Smith, and uh, I can't remember. I think Brian Hill is playing. Quite frankly, I can't remember at the top of my head, but... Um, yeah, they, they can kind of get things going, but Todd Gurley is really good right now. Dirk Cutter is utilizing the run a lot more than he did in years past. But another thing, the Vikings, I mean, listen, Vikings fans, if you're watching this, I am not saying the Falcons have a good defense. The Falcons are probably like the worst defense in the league. But let's also be honest here, the Vikings don't exactly have a good run defense. They have a 23% win rate when it comes to stopping the run, which is, I can't remember where that is. Actually, I think that's dead last. I kid you not. I think that's actually dead last in win rates for the run stop. Um, but listen, Vikings fans, Falcons have like the worst defense in the league. It's just, we, I don't know how we have a higher percentage uh, of a run stop win rate. We kind of just do, but uh, anyway, I think the run game could break out here, and then the last thing that could break out is the pass rush. Uh, this is another thing on the Falcons that was really good in the beginning of the season, and now it's not doing anything, but uh, hey, we got talented players at least. Like, we got Grady Jarrett, uh, we got Dante Fowler, I guess. Um, hopefully, we could get the pass rush going like it was in the beginning of the season. And also, the Vikings have a 54% pass block win rate, which is actually 22nd in the league. The Vikings offensive line uh, seems to struggle against most pass rush, uh, elite pass rushes. And I'm not saying the Falcons have anything elite, but, you know, it's it could break out here is all I'm saying. So what are some keys to victory for the Falcons? It's like the last one, just score points and bring in the pass rush. Um, if we score points, we're going to be able to not only keep up with Kirk Cousins and the offense, but also if we just score enough points, we might be able to score more than the Vikings have um, all season or, you know, in most games, if that makes sense. And then if we bring in the pass rush, you got to remember Kirk Cousins is not exactly a mobile quarterback. And if you bring in pressure, he probably is going to have a little bit of a hard time, you know, uh, trying to elude the pocket and make something out of it. So I think if you bring in the pass rush and score a lot of points, I think that's a pretty simple formula for the Falcons to win this game. But only time will tell if we can get those things turned around. But let's at least get a win for the freaking season, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And please make sure to check out my new Atlanta Falcons podcast, Dirty Bird Discussions. New episodes every Wednesday at 12 o'clock p.m. I go over really interesting Atlanta Falcons topics in the beginning. I talk about it for maybe like, what, 20 minutes? And then after that, I go over mailbag questions. Yes, mailbag questions are back. 
and the uh, support for that podcast has been really good, by the way. I thank you all for that. Um, it's already blowing up faster than I thought it was, and uh, it's getting good reviews, and I thank you for that. You can find it on SoundCloud, soon to be on iTunes. Um, I'm trying to figure that out, but anyway, the link for that is in the description below, and next week's episode is probably going to be my top three head coaching candidates for the Atlanta Falcons, so stay tuned for that. Other than that, guys, please stay safe. Love and appreciate you all for the support. As always, rise up.